basically close up and macro photography of corals uh, that are kept in reef aquariums. Um, we'll be doing a little uh, short about me, my, mainly my photographic history. Uh, we'll talk about the equipment I use for this specific type of photography. Uh, then we'll um, be doing a, a live tethered shoot using Capture One Pro, and you will be able to interact with that. And um, then we'll have a summary. Oh, well, uh, no, I, I forgot. Uh, after the, uh, after the, the shoot, I'll show you a few of my images, coral images that I've uh, processed from the past, and then we'll have a summary and closing. So let's get started. Uh, about me, I, I was uh, born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And my, my father was a commercial artist and worked for, he, he did, um, uh, he worked for an advertising agency. Uh, and some of his jobs were advertisements for pretty uh, popular magazines back then, Time, Life. And uh, my favorites of his ads were of uh, automobiles, uh, because what he would do is he would paint he would paint the automobiles photorealistically, but the rest of the elements were um, artistic. And I'm not sure if you can see this well enough, but that this one's in my right above me uh, behind my computer, so I give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Wow. Anyway, I, I I loved I loved that that kind of. Uh, work that he did. And um, uh, but later, he became a professor at Carnegie Mellon University in, in the design department. And he, he taught a few photography classes. So one summer, um, we got together and he taught me how to shoot uh, a 35 millimeter camera. I think he had a Canon AE-1 back then uh, in 35 millimeter. And he took me out and showed me how to operate that and then took me back to the dark room and, and we made, uh, developed the film and made some prints. And, you know, um, you know, I was a teen and, and, and I was a typical teen and I really wasn't all that interested in that. So, um, you know, however, as I started growing up, I wanted to do something with art, but since I didn't feel I had the talent um, the same as my father, I ended up taking a graphic arts uh, technical program as part of um, as part of a, uh, uh, a something offered through my high school. So I did this, and I, I figured I would um, my intro intro to art would be uh, maybe a graphic artist. Well, the class taught types of graphic arts, uh, design, and they had a, a, a printing press in there, an offset uh, printing, single color sheet fed printing press. So I discovered that, well, I didn't like typesetting and I, I didn't really have the skills, the creativity or whatever to be a graphic artist, but I was mechanical. So I was drawn to the printing press. Um, so my first job after I graduated, well, it was setting type, hot type on a Ludlow machine for rubber stamps. And I only took it because I needed a job right away, but I really wanted to be a press operator. And uh, my second job was, and the press that I ended up uh, running was the identical uh, machine that was in the, um, the class that I took or the, uh, the technical, the graphic arts class. And this is a German uh, single fed sheet pred, uh, press um, uh, that, um, that I, I really had a, a good time running. And I, I ran mer during the 20 year history of my uh, printing career, I probably ran um, five or six or seven different models of that particular press, ending up with a, a four color process model that I printed um, wine wine labels with. As a matter of fact, I, I think I have a couple here. Here's a here's a four color wine label that I printed. This has foil stamp embossing. I, I did the lithography, which is the photograph here. Um, 
and we did lots of lots of different wine labels. The company was in uh, Sonoma, the city of Sonoma. This particular label, although not processed color, I, I printed the gold and the red, but this is actually engraved. They had an engraving machine. They had an offset lithography machine. They did foil stamping and embossing, which is up here. And you may not be able to see this, but this particular label is embossed as well. So these were very high end um, labels. And I had a lot of, a lot of fun working with that. Um, Actually, I jumped ahead a little bit, but so let's go back to about uh, about uh, I don't know, 10, years, 10 15 years. Um, and in the in the mid 80s, I started scuba diving and I, I had no I did no photography since my dad and I did that little session in one summer I had no photography other than maybe operating a copy camera. Uh, in the pre-press department at these different print shops that I worked at. But in, in 84, um, I started scuba diving. So I purchased an inexpensive disc camera. I don't know if any of you remember that. They're, they're real thin cameras and you put a disc, the film was a disc. And, I, and uh, anyway, I was able to get one of those fairly cheap and I bought an underwater case for it. And uh, I decided that after using it for about a half a year, that I didn't like I didn't like I didn't like photographing um, while I was diving because I was missing all the action. I'd spend half my dive trying to capture one <laughs> image, you know. So um, I ended up dropping that, and I didn't touch a camera again until about ten years later, when I got married to my my now wife Tony. And she had a, a 35 millimeter Minolta Maxim film camera that I started to use occasionally, um, you know, for vacations mostly, and stuff like that. Um, but after, uh, oh, that, that then it comes the part with the, uh, the Heidelberg uh, four color after 20 years and doing the wine thing. Um, so, one, when, I, when I was at the uh, wine um, label printer, the, my employer knew that I had the hobby of reef aquariums. So we, um, we did a lot of pre-press proofing where a designer would come in and uh, approve the colors. And they didn't like it. Well, we had to wash the color off the printing press mix new color up and because a lot of times these were special mixed colors that I mixed myself and this took a lot of time so the the uh, the boss's idea was to have me install an aquarium so that the, everybody would have something to you know look at and talk about and be amused entertained with while they were waiting so we did that and we installed I installed a reef aquarium next to the viewing station the next thing you know, we have six aquariums in the print shop. Every all the printers had their own aquarium, and I started a, a busy. He, the the employer said, "I'll pay you to take care of these extra." So I started. That's how my coral reef ecosystems business um, was born, um, because of him and all the maintenance I had to do on, on these aquariums. Uh, so anyway. Um, in light of the new business, I, I found myself in need uh, uh, of photography for my website that I created in order to sell uh, corals, which I was uh, growing. I had an aquaculture facility that I put together. I was growing corals, needed to photograph those. Um, and I also um, at, uh, started making uh, custom lighting uh, because reef aquariums need high intensity, certain spectrum light so that the corals can grow because they're all photosynthetic. Anyway, I needed to photograph these things. Um, and uh, um, I, I ended up using Tony's Minolta initially, 
that's all I had. And I, I, I shot transparencies, transparencies for my lighting products for advertisements with the film camera. And I, I actually even shot um, some some tank shots and some coral shots. Here's just some some prints of of what I did. This was one of, one of my tanks, and here's a here's a a field of corals from one of my tanks. I sold lots of these. Another another coral from my tank. Um, so so that's that's how I um, I fulfilled that need was with with Tony's film camera. Oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and um, I even oh no. So I lost my place. Hang on, guys. Um, so um, finally, um, after using that camera for quite a while, uh, in uh, looks like it was um, right around 2001, Tony purchased me a, my first digital camera. It was a Canon PowerShot G2. And um, it was my Christmas present and uh, boy, I was so happy. No more film, no more problems with film and, and no more uh, costs associated with buying film and waiting for the film to come back. <laughs> so I was, I was having a ball with this, this brand new digital toy, which I've never used before. I, I don't remember all the upgrades since then, but I do remember uh, going with Canon for the for their value, and I've stuck with Canon um, all these years, and I currently shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV full frame camera, a Canon 80D uh, with a crop sensor, and I also use Canon's EOS 1V, which was their flagship um, film camera, which takes all my EF lenses from my digital camera. So um, I, I'm really happy with my current situation uh, in, as far as digital goes and, and, and the film camera is great. <clears throat> um, so with my new interest in photography and actually need for, my need for photography to photograph uh, my corals and products actually sparked interest in photography in general. So I decided to go back to school and I had attended uh, SRJC um, uh, and I, I, I started with web development classes so that I could use that information to uh, develop my online store for selling lighting and corals. Um, so I also took digital design, I took photography classes in film and digital, and I took four semesters of Photoshop for the Photoshop uh, certificate. Um, I even took a few art classes, uh, thinking that at some point I'm gonna get creative in art. Uh, but you know, it's just, it just wasn't in my genes. Um, anyway, uh, I ended up being a kind of a fixture at the school for a while and I was offered to be the school photographer, school photographer um, several times. Um, after, after, uh, after taking the web development classes, I started uh, uploading a lot of coral photos for my new online store. And coral photography has now really captured my interest, not because I had to do it, because I was actually enjoying these photos. So one day I was searching online for, um, for coral images, and I came across an image that I took of my 180 foot long on a lighting manufacturer's website as on their homepage as their, 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 their image. <laughs> um, and no credit to me, never was asked for it. So my point is I'm discovering, now I'm putting images on the internet and I'm finding people are stealing them. The next images I found were on two different websites selling corals 
and they had my coral photos on their websites as their corals for sale. <laughs> so, you know, uh, this is initially really upset me, but hey, if you put something on the internet, just be prepared that people are potentially going to take it, whether they can download it, cut it, snip it, photograph it, whatever, they, they can and will, if they want it, take your photos. So I just said, hey, that's, that's the cost of doing business. And um, I, I really didn't do anything about it. Um, the next time I found a photo was National Geographic was offering free download of screensaver shots. Well, one of those free download shots was a picture, a macro or a close-up photograph of a Montipora coral that I submitted to one of their competitions or their sharing things. Um, so at this point, I'm thinking, wow, I mean, my photos are getting stolen and they're getting used by National Geographic. Um, so they must be decent. Um, so um, I was able to start selling them and I sold them to uh, online magazine, uh, Advanced Chorus Magazine. American Re Marine Life Dealers Association, which I was on the board. Um, and I also sold one to a group for a CD. This was my tank. And these were, um, this was an anemone which I used for their intro uh, page. And my, they did give me credit down here and they imprinted the CD with a picture of the same anemone, I think. So Wait. this one, this was, this was fun stuff. And, and so uh, I was uh, not really making any money uh, or not much money uh, with those things. So I thought I maybe, maybe it was time to, to expand my photography with a new business uh, named Steve Ready Photography. <laughs> and uh, so I had, the way I got that started is I attended a uh, Kendall Jackson Tomato Festival um, and I shot all day, processed the images, then I donated them to Kendall Jackson and plugged my new business for hoping to get potential work. Well, it was probably the best thing I ever did because after that I did get jobs from them and I started serving the wine industry and um, it couldn't have been a better fit for me because um, I'm not a niche photographer. I'm not a wedding photographer or, you know, landscape photographer. I like all kinds of photography and I was picking up jobs that a single job could include portraits, an event, um, landscapes, vi vineyards, and uh, objects of fine art. Um, I even got, uh, all of those could be in one, for one uh, particular job. So this really, I get bored easy, and this was really a good fit for me. I even did some digital designs and paintings, uh, as well as uh, printing and framing. So fast forward to, 2020, since the coronavirus outbreak at the beginning of the year, my only photo jobs have been maybe a couple studio uh, product jobs, but mainly I'm, I'm down to digital processing, copying, and printing. Um, and uh, however, I have plenty to keep me busy because I've returned to the world of film. Since I really didn't learn a whole lot of it, I kind of missed pretty much even though I've shot film cameras, I didn't really do it because I loved it. So um, now I'm getting back into that uh, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Matter of fact, let me just show you real quick. Uh, I have, um, I have probably eight or nine film cameras that I have totally restored and um, Starting with uh, the Roloflex, one of them was my father's, and then I had to have another one. Those are ready to go. I have probably five um, Polaroid cameras, and also have 
Um, here we have uh, contacts, we have Leica, we have a cute little pocket folder. I know the focus isn't good right here. Uh, and that one up on the top left is actually a twin lens reflex, like the roll of flexes, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's 35 millimeter. And then over here, I have a whole shelf, uh, two, two Nikon cameras and a slew of Nikon glass, which I'm really enjoying. And when I get a mirrorless camera one of these days, I, I may be able to use some of that vintage glass on there, which will be a heck of a lot of fun. Um, so anything, that's, that's about it for the about me section. And let's see where we are. Oh. Let me just finish by saying, uh, yeah, looking into the future, I plan on, um, I plan on uh, um, attracting more studio work and phasing out most of the on-site work. Uh, my photography studio is currently being completed, completely remodeled and uh, will include a complete professional dark room a powder and dressing room for area for clients. And we'll also be adding additional large format digital printer to increase my printing capabilities. I'm not sure if I'll ever re officially retire, but I'm looking forward to the days when my personal projects take up most of my time, especially working with Phil. All right, enough about me. Let's get to the equipment that I use for um, shooting coral shots. Basically, you can you can use any any kind of uh, camera to shoot corals, from a cell phone, film cameras, as as you've already seen. Um, oh, speaking of film camera, I just wanted to show you two. I shot these two with my dad's Rolleiflex. So, yeah. You don't, you can use whatever you want and have on hand um, for coral photography. Um, I use my, I use two things primarily. One, I use my cell phone and I use that when I need to take a quick uh, shot of a coral, close shot of a coral to show a potential customer um, and text them. The um, phone, uh, phone cameras, at least the newer ones, I have an X, it's not the brand new model, but um, it is a good camera. And the thing about them, the, the sensors are so small that your depth of field is, is really nice. And I can, I can take this cell phone and I have a, a look down viewer. You put this on the water, floats, okay? Take your cell phone, put it on there, keep it uh, parallel to this surface so you don't get uh, distortion and, and shoot away. And you don't have to worry about a tripod. You don't have to worry about shallow depth of field. You just get a decent, really decent image with very little effort. As a matter of fact, let me show you, I, I took I took this image just a, a few minutes ago with my cell phone, just as I showed you. <laughs> so um, they can be very, very, very useful. Um, my, my, the camera I use when I, I want to do high quality work is I use the, my full frame uh, uh, Canon 5D Mark IV. And I, 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 uh, I have that fitted with a 100 millimeter macro lens. Now, it's called a 100 millimeter macro lens, but it's not, it's really, it's really a, a standard lens. It just, it just can focus down to close or one-to-one -one macro ratio. Once you're off to one-to-one -one macro, I mean, you can use it for portraits. Um, it's a great lens. Um, I use, I've used it for portraits and uh, tabletop photography. So it's not a, a macro only lens. 
it's a lens capable of macro. Now, uh, my uh, Canon makes a, a macro only lens. It's uh, called an MP-65 mil MPE-65 millimeter. And the only thing this camera will do is macro. It starts at one to one magnification and it goes all the way up to five times magnification. Now, my 100 millimeter macro lens goes to one to one magnification as does their Canon's 180 millimeter macro lens goes to one to one, but that's it. The, the differences obviously are the focal length and uh, the minimum focusing distance, uh, which is shorter on the 100 millimeter lens than the 180. Um, as far as um, the magnification goes, when I use my 100 millimeter and I want closer, I want higher magnification than one to one, I add um, a thing called a, uh, an extension tube. It's just a tube, it's, you know, there's nothing in there, which is good, doesn't uh, degrade your image quality. But this, uh, each tube is 25 millimeters and adding one tube to uh, one, uh, my 100 millimeter, which is one to one, changes it to one, uh, it adds a, a 0.25 magnification to it. I never shoot with just one. I, I stack them and I use two. So when using two, um, now instead of max one to one, magnification on my 100 millimeter, I now have 1.5 magnification. And we're gonna demonstrate this in a live shoot um, following this section. Um, so these are, these are, are really um, good units to have. Uh, next thing is, oh yeah, you're gonna need, uh, not all the time, but sometimes, um, uh, hoods are very um, uh, useful, especially if you're getting a ref reflection that a hood can eliminate. And the other thing, um, this is a standard plastic that came with the lens, but you can also buy aftermarket hoods that are, are rubber. So say you're photographing a, um, a plexiglass aquarium, uh, you may not, and you want to put your lens right up there. Maybe you don't want to do that with a metal lens. So you, with the rubber lens, uh, mm -hmm. assume this is an aquarium. You can just stick that baby right on there, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, so that's about it for the lenses. The other thing you're going to need, if you're you're not going to use a cell phone, um, is a tripod. Um, I use my tripod for all the shots I take with my, my full frame camera. Um, and I use it for front, front uh, on, straight on shots and top down shots. Um, and I'm gonna show you how that, that all works with this, this tripod. Let me spin this around and show you. Let's see. Hmm. Actually, yeah, let me, let me just get in front of the camera here. I think this will work better. Um, okay. Camera off. So I recommend, um, okay. I'm recommending a, 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 a tripod that is heavy. This thing weighs a ton. I don't like to go hiking with this. <laughs> um, you want it heavy, solid, sturdy, and you want it to go high. Because if you have a tall aquarium and you decide you want to boom it and shoot da down, you're going to need that height. Um, I find having a tripod with a, a level on the base, so you know if the whole structure is level, is extremely useful. And um, I, on this particular tripod, I have a Manfrotto, you know, aftermarket or, you know, other 
company's lens uh, ball head on here. And this has um, its own uh, levelers on the plate, which becomes very useful if you're doing straight on photography. You want, you want, your, um, you want your lens completely parallel with the, the, front, the front surface of the aquarium. If you try to compose a shot because it's a killer shot like this, it's, it's gonna be totally blurry. Um, you need to have it parallel to this glass to get a, a nice quality shot. So um, these bubbles uh, help you get that done if, if you can't put your, I, I actually just put my, my lens right up on the glass and so it's, and adjust my tripod and then pull the tripod away if I, if I need to. That way I know I'm, I'm really parallel. But I'm just a little bit, uh, you know, maybe I'm a little anal about that. But you will find you cannot take a, a shot at an angle. Um, the tripod, uh, you're, you're going to want one that will boom. And this is the way that works. You take the column out and you turn your holder horizontal. Now, now you can um, have your tank here and this is boomed over and you can shoot down. This is very useful. If we have time, we will do a shot um, doing with that configuration. All right. Um, so let's, uh, the next thing you're gonna need is, and this is, uh, I guess it's really not equipment, but uh, you're, you're gonna, the tank has to be illuminated and all aquariums have lights. And um, the thing is uh, we, are, we are shooting corals and they're not moving and we're gonna be turning our pumps off so that if they're fleshy or tentacly, they're not gonna be moving, at least not very much. And so we're, we're I'm mainly consider um, concerned with depth of field. So I normally use aperture priority mode. I set a, a, my ISO at 100. I, I pick my the depth of field uh, f-stop I want and I let the shutter do what it has to do to get the exposure that I'm after. Now, um, uh, so, um, so we don't have to worry about uh, a move movement. Um, so, so uh, oh yeah, the lights. So if you have a low intensity single um, fluorescent light, say on an aquarium, you don't have to worry about it being insufficient because you're just gonna give it the amount of exposure it takes to collect enough light that it needs. Uh, and it, it works most of the time. Um, However, if you find yourself in a situation where it's just not cutting it, you can use a strobe. Um, just use a regular flash, get yourself some way to hold it up over the aquarium top down. You trying to use flash front firing, you're asking for troubles with the glass and all that. But this works really well um, for top down uh, uh, supplemental lighting. And you know, and it's a nice daylight color. Um, the other option, and I've never actually done this, I need to try this, is uh, to use a dedicated macro flash unit. The, this uh, goes into your hot shoe and you have uh, actually two, 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 two different uh, lights. And these can be adjusted in intensity. So you can get, you know, you can get nice, uh, interesting lighting effects with uh, proper adjustment. I need to do that. I've never done that. Um, and of course that would be in top down. Uh, in my case, I am pretty lucky. I have an LED light fixture that has, I believe, uh, we'll find out in a minute. It has a bunch of different, colored LEDs when illuminated together, you can uh, tweak the 
color the the color temperature to your liking or and or the corals liking um, so this is great for photography because because some some reef aquariums uh, are heavily blue lit li lit with blue light and the reason for that is uh, corals have pigments that will fluoresce under this light and hey it's cool it, it looks really it looks really fantastic but the problem is that your our cameras can't capture that cool color fluorescence that you see um, so if we want to photograph a tank we need to add some daylight spectrum to that to that blue bluely lit tank in order to um, get uh, corals with a little more color um, so I'm going to I'm going to switch this uh, my video camera onto my aquarium and show you the lights and I'll demonstrate straight them a, a little bit for you Cool. All right. So, as you can see now, does the tank look blue to you? Yes. Looks blue, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, this is not all blue light. I'm going to show you what it is in a minute. Um, right now, we're seeing. Um, we're right at the end of the daylight pattern. We're starting to go into the sunset phase. And let me, I think what I should do first is I'll, I can hit a play button and it'll, it'll very fastly play through a 24 hour lighting cycle. So you can see what happens. So let's just do that real quick. This is moonlighting. You can't see them now because my lights, room lights are on, but you can see there's special LEDs just for moon. They just came out with this color, which is awesome. Now a sunrise sunrise now we're at uh noon noon full full on lights and now we're going into sunset and then the moon so this particular light i mean th there's no nothing here that you need to know for photography but I, I think it's cool and um we can we can simulate different times of the day if we need to however um I have created a special preset for photography. And basically what it is, is it's this noon daylight, which you're seeing right now. And to that, I add enough white light, see, to bring that color temperature a little warmer. I still like it on the blue side, um, but if it's too blue, then I can't warm it up enough. And if it's, um, if it's, too warm when I cool it down a little too much, then it doesn't look so realistic. So I've come to a, a part where um, I, I, I think it works <laughs> really well. Um, I'm going to show you just quickly what this what the uh, what the adjustment looks like. Can you let me see? I might need to put it on manual focus. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So each one of these sliders is a different color LED. This is UV color. This is violet. This is um, uh, like a royal blue, a light blue, green, red, moonlight, and the white, which I just showed you that I, I pulled up to get the, the color I want for photography. So it's pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and... Um, before we before we get into the the uh, interactive shoot here, uh, we should just talk a little bit about um, uh, reflections because when you're doing obviously uh, the front photography, um, you may have issues with reflections. So what do we do? We can close blinds, we can close doors, we can turn off overhead lights or room table lamps. Um, uh, my, my situation here, uh, I'll give you, I'll move the camera so you can see a, ref a reflected area that I have here. Let's see, this over here. 
And let's see if we can show this. That's not showing up. Hang on, let me raise this up a little. I think you need a higher perspective to see it. Okay. Let's see. Okay, yeah, I see some reflection there. So. All right, you see this uh, reflection here on the bottom in the middle? Mm -hmm. See why I'm waving my hand over it? Yep. Yes. So that's from a piece of paper I have laying on my desk. Of course, I could just move the paper, then, but then I couldn't do the demonstration. So get a piece of black board, anything black. It could be board. It could be um, a black uh, terry cloth towel. It could be a black sheet. Black uh, velvet works well. So you just put that over your reflection and there you go, see? Totally, totally blocked it up. The other thing that works um, sometimes is um, get a black board and cut a hole in it just big enough to fit your lens into, okay? And then you just put that right over your lens and that eliminates a lot of uh, reflections coming that way from behind and that way. When you're shooting real close to the glass, you're not gonna have any reflection problems usually. That's what we're gonna be doing uh, now. So, I want to talk, talk about two other things before we do the photo shoot. And um, that is, if you're using a, um, a regular camera, you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to use some type of way to remotely uh, uh, take your exposure. Um, you know, in the old days, they had little uh, wired remote controls. My camera that we'll be using tonight has uh, a timer mode, which I'm sure most cameras do these days. Mine has two seconds and 10. When I use that timer, I use 10 to give it enough time to quit wiggling. I mean, I've got a super steady thing, but I, I swear, um, you know, there's some movement happening. So we want to eliminate all that. The other thing is nowadays uh, the cameras are coming with apps. They have Wi-Fi, they have Bluetooth. Just fire up the app and, and use, use your device as, as the trigger point. Tonight we're going to be shooting tethered with a wire to my uh, PC um, and I'll be using my mouse um, as, the, uh, as my trigger finger. And then last, um, remember how I was talking about coral uh, fluorescence and that happening when they're exposed to deep blue light? Well, unfortunately, you, you, you can't capture that on, in a photograph. However, you can, you can purchase um, a yellow filter. And this yellow filter will allow you to uh, appreciate some of the fluorescence. And uh, we won't be doing that tonight, but I have, uh, after the shoot, I'll, I'll be showing you some of my completed images from the past, and I have a few of those in there. So let's go ahead and take a few shots of, the, of, the, um, of a few corals. Oh, I forgot to start my timer. How are you guys doing on time? Uh, so we've been going how long? Uh, 45 minutes? Okay. Yep. Yep. What are we trying to keep this to? Like an hour and a half or, or what? I don't want to go too too long. Hour and a half is good. Hour and a half is good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So... Okay. 
Now I'm going to uh, have to turn my, um, my camera off and we're gonna switch um, to screen sharing. So bear with me while I do that. Looks like um, we're going to stop video on Zoom. And I'm getting a spit, spitting, spilling. Oh, okay. We stop video on Zoom. We're going to turn off the video camera. We're going to now fire up Capture One Pro. And once we have that fired up, which it's coming up now, I should be able to share my screen with you. Screen sharing, advanced and portion of screen share. Now, anybody see anything? Yep, yep. looks good. Yeah. Yay, okay. Let me collapse your guys' little faces because I don't need to see those right now. Uh, okay, so here we are. This is a, this is a program that uh, I am using for, actually, I, I, I've, um, I was having problems with Lightroom tethered shooting, which I, I use quite a bit in the studio. And it was so frustrating that um, I decided to use this program instead. Um, this program is much more powerful than Lightroom. It has live view, although I just updated Lightroom Classic a few hours ago and I read the updates and they finally added live view to their tethered shooting function where it, it was really, really light before. I haven't investigated it, but anyway, that's why I, I switched to this program and I, I'm using it for all my processing now. I still use Lightroom because I have to, I've been using it and I loved it and I still love it for many, many years and you, you can't import a processed image from Lightroom into Capture One and see the same processing. It's just, it just doesn't work. So you know, now I'm using two programs, but this one is the one I'm primarily using. I'm always using it for tethered shooting, and now I'll be experimenting and, and using it for my raw processing moving forward. Anyway, it's it's like it's like it's just like Lightroom in a lot of ways. Um, the thing I like about it is it's fully customizable. All these tool, tool, these tabs that you see me hovering in the top right corner, those can be added or subtracted um, from a list. And each one of these, um, these tabs have tools in them which can be added or uh, subtracted. I, I could put a tool from this tab into this tab or, you know, vice versa. It's highly expandable, uh, uh, customizable, which I, I'm really enjoying. And even the, all these things in the top can be uh, changed and customized if needed. So what, what I think, oh, I was going to, uh, I was going to leave the video camera on so you could see me set up the camera to the aquarium, but I failed to do that. So um, it, it's basically just going to be the tripod, the, the tripod and the camera is going to be pretty much smack up against the front glass. And um, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and, and hook up the camera and turn it on first. And well, I'm doing that now. <clears throat> All right, so turning the camera on and I'm going to go up to the tool tab and I have a little icon called capture. So now you see it's already recognized my camera EOS 5D Mark IV. You can see I'm in aperture priority mode. I'm shooting ISO 100, my battery's good. So we're good there. Uh, looks like I have a minus one on my uh, exposure 
compensation and I'm shooting at F16. Um, I've decided uh, years ago uh, with experimenting with this particular 100 millimeter lens that F16 was the highest number I could uh, accept before um, the image quality started to turn uh, turn to, uh, uh, to to get worse. So I, I'm totally happy with F16 and um, that's how I decided that. Um, so now I'll go ahead and start the live capture, which will open up a new window. And I'm going to take a few moments to set the tripod up and aim it at our first coral, which is uh, on the sand bed. All right, putting it on the tripod. I wish I had was able to have two video feeds at the same time so you could see what I was doing, but I wasn't able to figure out all that technology. Oh, I lost my feed. Okay, turn the camera back on, see if we can get the camera back. Not sure why we lost that. Let me um, let me uh, close this window, and I can't get to the darn window closing because there I can close it down this way. Okay, let me see if I can get my camera back on. Not sure why we lost that connection. Sorry, everybody. You know, I practiced this several times. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 a given, isn't it? I mean, geez. Um, if this doesn't work, I'm going to close the program and uh, relaunch it. Yeah, let's try that. Something obviously got out of sync here. So let me, I'm hooking the cable back up. All right. So I'm going to close this program. I was getting ready to tell you the why reason I like Capture One Pro is it's so stable. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we've turned that off. Let's uh, try to refire it up. All right. I always leave that splash screen on so I know new stuff that's coming on. I used to turn them off, but all right. So now we're back to where we were. Let's try turning the camera back on. No. Jeez. I okay. I'm gonna try. I have a little strain relief on this uh, on my cable. Uh, 
Maybe it got messed up. Okay, I think I had a cable fail, believe it or not. I had a little short extension on there and uh, removed that and used a different extension. And now let's see, I've got my camera back. You have all your info there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's see if we can find this coral in our other camera here. There we go. Let's get a little height on that, huh? Actually, I've got my tripod uh, the wrong way. First, what I'm doing is I, I'm putting it up against the glass so I get my um, my lens nice and, and lined up. Once I have that, then I can drag it back because that, that's too close of a focusing distance for this particular shot. So now we're getting close. And there we go. Let's go with that. What do you think? Looks good. That's good, huh? OK. So um, one of the nice things about this uh, program is, is obviously the live view. Um, and we can do, we can, uh, we can zoom in at a hundred percent. And if we want a particular, say we want this, uh, this area right here to be in focus, um, we can put a little focus meter there, which is only going to meter this, this area. And you can, you can make it bigger, any shape you want. You can actually add several of these in different areas mm -hmm. if you want to as well. And once you do that, with I have my lens set in manual mode, I can hit these little buttons on the left here, see? And these are actually changing uh, my focus. Ooh. And um, that's the wrong way. That's not going to work. Let's sneak up on it this way. I'm too, I'm, the camera is, is focused all the way. So I'm, I'm too close. My minimum focus distance um, is not that close. So I'm pulling, oh heck, I'm pulling, I'm pull the camera back. Do you still have a lens hood on? No lens hood, no, zero. There we go. Oh. Um, let me try it. Yeah. So now I should have enough um, margin to focus near and far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, now I've gone past it. Now I'm going to go back. See, we're right where the focus is right there. So that's, that's particularly helpful a lot of times. Um, however, in this, this shot, you know, if I, if I keep that focus point right here, with F16, uh, I'm not going to get a whole lot of stuff in focus back here. So in this situation, if I hit this little button, that's a depth of field simulator. So I would actually just f uh, hit that and then um, focus it zoomed out like this until I decide what I like. I think I'll come forward a little bit more. Let's go with that. What do you guys think? Okay, cool. Good. Nice. Yeah. Good. So um, the other thing about um, these lights that I have are very high contrast and they're very intense. And speeding, speaking of intense, I forgot to put my preset on for photography. 
So let me go do that. I'll select the preset for photo. Now you'll notice it's going to get brighter, should, in a second. Yeah, see how the temperature got, color temperature got warmer and it got yeah. brighter, right? Yep. So this is what I was talking about when I was demonstrating my lighting system. Um, that I like to have a little more daylight added to it. And you'll, you'll see why once we process this. Um, I like to, um, I have an exposure eva evaluation here and I like to end up with the, anywhere from minus one half stop to one stop for coral photography um, because the highlights blow out really easy. Not so much on this coral, but if there's corals with white tips, oh, it could be extremely hard. So it's, it, it's good to save as many of your highlights as you can and recover the shadows if you want them later. So uh, this is the, the 100 millimeter lens with no expansion tubes. And we're, we're not at one, at one to one, we're, we're a little less. So this is basically, in my opinion, a close up image. Okay, so we have everything set. Um, so I'm going to take the exposure and you see how I have, a, I have an exposure button here and exposure button here. Well, this button is actually on the window of the main program and this button is on the window of the live window, window which I have stopping right here at this toolbar. The, the reason I do that is, I'll show you. So we're going to take the shot and it immediately goes to um, the, the main program and loads it for, for preview. Now, uh, we, will, we will mess, we will develop that later or, or one of these others. All we have to do now is hit live view, it brings back this window and, and now we're ready for our next shot. And what we'll do is this time we'll take the same shot, but we'll add the extension tubes and we'll focus it uh, as close as possible, which will give us 1.5 magnification, which will be a true macro shot. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. Now here's the, um, I haven't moved the tripod and this is at uh, with, with both of my 25 millimeter extension tubes um, applied. Now, the, the, um, the lens is now set to uh, one to one. And you see how it's still blurry. So I cannot focus this close. So I'm gonna leave the lens set to one to one, but I'm just gonna try to achieve focus by pulling back the camera or the uh, tripod. So, mm -hmm. yep. did I do it? Yeah, yep. pretty good, huh? Yeah. So nice. let's see, let's see uh, if we can get a better composition. You know, sometimes it's just impossible to get what you want because the coral, you can't put your hand in the tank and, and everything. Oh. The other thing I want to do real quick is you see you see right here um, you see this little piece of thread here moving around. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a this this particular coral um, doesn't have tentacles, so this fleshy folds they don't really move that much with uh, current. However, that is moving. So I normally will turn my pumps off, and we'll do that. We'll do that now, real quick. Um, Whoops. <laughs> oh, that's my website. Um, there we go. Let, uh, go into here. We'll go into the aquarium control. We'll pick my aquarium and we will turn off the protein skimmer, the main pump, and we're going to turn off these, um, these other pumps as well. Okay, now this should this in a while this all this stuff that's flying by that you see will, will calm down. Um, 
you know what? Let's let's take a look at uh, the depth of field preview. I think that's what we were looking at. Yeah, who was stuck on? Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. We'll go ahead and because uh, here's where the focus is. Um, let's go with that. Okay, take one a shot of that, and we're um, the. All right, I captured that one, and the exposure is of eight seconds. Hmm. Um, and here's what we have. And you see my exposure evaluation, I was just about a full stop underexposed, which it's really, you know, helps with all this area in here, all those highlights. You, you, uh, if I hit my exposure warning, you see I'm just getting, I mean, that's nothing, right? See those orange spots? That's where my highlights are, are breaking up. But I'm totally happy with that. What are the green bits? Um, these, uh, these, are, these are the mouths. You see yeah. the little slit right there? That's yeah. the mouth, like lips. You know, the lips are closed. <laughs> and uh, these, these corals in these folds, in the evening at night, um, they, they get tentacles that come out of here and they catch floating particles and food particles and they bring them to the mouths. Here's a mouth here, here's a mouth here. Um, wow. this, this coral, all, every one of those are, are a different mouth. Fascinating. So cool. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, let's, let's just do, since uh, time is really flying by. Um, I was going to do a couple more straight ons, but I think we should do one uh, top down just for the heck of it, since I was talking about top down. Uh, so let's, let's do one of those. I took a list. I think we'll do, um, I think we'll leave the extension tubes on. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we're going to do a, a pink and green Pacillopora damacornis. <laughs> and what, what it, it's, uh, what I'm going to use, I showed you guys the uh, little box I made, right? For yeah. Doing, well, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to screw that onto the lens now. And when I, um, when I am done doing this, this uh, capture, I'll leave the camera set up in that position. So once this, um, this uh, software demonstration is over, I can go back to the video cam and I can show you guys what, what the setup looks like, okay? So now I have, I have the, uh, the waterproof box that I made on and it's gonna take a minute. I, I've pulled the, the center column out and now we're going to extend the tripod. I usually set both of the legs right up against the front of the aquarium and the, the next leg will be the one that keeps keeps them pressed up against the aquarium. So that won't be a it won't be a nice um, you know, what, a, a, a symmetrical setup. It's kind of, I'm using one leg to push it up against the aquarium. Um, now, up we go a little taller. Close. Okay. Of course, um, if you ever do this, I don't have to tell you to be careful, right? <laughs> These boxes, uh, I have, I have um, flooded this box once, and I had to have the the, uh, the lens sent in for repair. It's, they're not waterproof. <laughs> not salt proof either, right? <laughs> no, no. 
I mean, this lens is so worn out. Um, I think I'm going to buy the newer version. Uh, they, they have a, uh, what do they have now? They have the same lens with uh, image stabilization, which we don't care about when we're using this tripod, but you know, other times it's very handy. And I think, I think the newer lens may be a little bit better performing than this older lens, although I'm not, not entirely sure about that. This is an incredibly sharp lens. It has served me very well. Um, okay. Well, almost there. Okay. Let me start my live view and see where we are. Turn off the depth of field and see if we can um, get something in focus. Wrong way. Let's see. Oh, there's the coral. All right, Let's see if we can get it in focus. Where's my focus? Nope, wrong way. You know, I never can memorize which which way I need to to go. Ah, this is looking good. Mm. This is looking very good. Let's see. Let's see if I can get a little better composition. Just want to fill the screen with just this one coral. I think that's better than what we had. And so this is going to be a situation where I'm going to use my depth of field preview um, to do the final focus uh, adjustment. So I think I want to get these areas, see these green areas that are deep in there. I want to get those a little in focus and try to, yes, that's a little too far. I think I like that. Let's see. Actually focusing right on the tips. I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna back down a little bit on that. Uh, the other way. Let me go a little deeper. There, that, now let's look at our depth of field preview. Yeah. Let's try that, see what it looks like. If we don't like it, we'll go take another one. Oh, yeah, I like that. Camera didn't know what rotation it was in. I think it looks better this way. Beautiful pattern. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it looks good. Reminds yeah. me of Day of the Dead now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So, so we have a half an hour left. Uh, you know, I think I, we could bust off one more real quick since we're set up up here. Let's, um, you know, let's, let's just take a spin. The, the, the nice thing about um, shooting with this um, this apparatus is that um, you don't have to worry about keeping it parallel. Now, if you didn't have this and you wanted to shoot top down, you would need to have the camera parallel to the water surface. And obviously you'd have to have no water movement at all. And that works, that works very well, um, but your perspective, you can't get a perspective like this because you have to keep it parallel to the surface. Um, I think 
I see something there. We may have to crop this one, but we'll go with that. Um, if we could get closer to this, you see all these uh, striations in the coral. Boy, these these are really cool when you when you can get them uh, close. Let me play with the focus just a pinch. Um, turn depth of field off. I want to have some of the tips really, really nice. I think that will work. Yeah, we'll go with that one. All right, yeah, that works, it works for me. And um, okay, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to take the camera. Uh, oh no, I wanted to show you the setup. So I'll, I'll leave the camera there. I'll just have to be careful. I don't like, like leaving it hanging in the tank because um, I'm, I'm kind of like a gorilla sometimes. Anyway, uh, now that our, our shoot is over, we can close our live view window and Let's let's uh, pick one to um, process. Gee, all right. You know what? Let's uh, uh, you guys have a choice. I like that last one though. This one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go with a crop. I, I, I'm not so sure I like this, um, this lighter color coming through there. Um, if I had more time, we, we could have been all over that coral and found just the right uh, spot, especially since we were able to um, uh, tilt our camera around. Yeah. I think the original um, rotation was probably the best. I don't remember what that was now. <laughs> See, oh, it wasn't that one. Enter, come around twice more. I think that was it, yeah. Yeah, that was the original. Anyway, let's just, uh, for the fun of it, we'll make it a one, a square shot. There we go. And you know what? We don't have to. Oh, there you go. You like that better? Okay. Yeah. We don't have to make a masterpiece, but we should do pretty good. <laughs> you give it a best shot. So here's a square shot, and I'm going to go to my tab here. Now, I, I don't know. Um, uh, of course, uh, like I said before, the exposure evaluates. This was one stop underexposed. Um, my profile is just my generic camera profile. Um, and I think that's probably going to work fine. We can build contrast in later. So we'll just leave it on auto. Um, Beautiful. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can give it a little more pop. Uh, move our, our levels uh, slider there. Let's play with the mid-tones. There. I like that, huh? You, you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the dark end, you know, I like oh, I, I like blackening this up, getting rid of this some of this detail in there, you know. Uh, huh? Maybe the vignette. Okay, let's no, we're not there yet. Okay, let's okay. Move from the top <laughs> down. Um, uh, curves, I don't I don't think I'm gonna play with those tonight. Um, Actually, kind of like the exposure where it was pretty much. Maybe just mm -hmm. the hair down. Let's bring in some contrast. Just a pinch, maybe 10 points, 12 points. 
brightness up a pinch saturation does it really need saturation people ask me do you saturate yeah. your coral shots well sometimes a little bit but really does it need it no you saturate oh. it look now you lose the tone difference you know wow. so i'm just not going to saturate that at all um, we don't have to worry about our highlights matter of fact we could bring them up a little bit because we did a, such a well, good job of um, capturing them uh, and then the shadows, yeah, uh, I think, uh, stay about there. Whites, maybe a little bit. And lower blacks, just a little bit more. Clarity, clarity always is pretty nice on corals. You got to use it lightly, though. Actually, what I like is, as well or better is structure because it brings out a lot of detail. Let me rake that all the way to the right. You see all that detail I brought in? Mm -hmm. Here, here's where we started. Now that's all the way to the right. Now it's a little too extreme for me, but I just wanted to illustrate what that structure can do. I, I really kind of like that. As far as the white balance, I, I like the color, but I'll show you since we did uh, add some white light to our uh, shooting uh, lights, um, now we can, we can really push that to the warm side, or we can even go uh, obviously way more blue. Um, but I like the color uh, my camera auto white balance. I am very happy with it. I, I like to see uh, different colors here. When I do my white balance, I always go for color diversity versus color casts. Um, and I just think my camera does a real good way. So somebody mentioned a vignette. So let's go ahead and add a small. Yeah, I think that that's kind yeah. of nice. Just a little touch, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you have it. Let's uh, let's do one more. Uh, let's. Uh... Yeah. What about that one? This it looks one? like you could bring some color out in that if you try it out. This one. Okay. Yeah. Let's try this one. Okay. Uh, let's see where we are. We're still at a, a one stop under. That's good. We don't need these characteristics anymore. I always like to bring the highlights up a bit since I have them to play with. We can put our exposure warning on. See the, that loss right there? I can't really even tell it's lost. I don't know about you guys, but so I, I'm totally fine with that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, moving these midtones kind of brings the saturation and color up a bit, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make this really dramatic if we wanted to. Um, So yeah, let's uh, let's give this a little saturation, and uh, highlights could actually go down a little. And I'm torn between what do I want? Uh, maybe you know this image probably I would probably come in here with a brush because I really like this this area here, and you know if I crush my shadows, my blacks, I'm losing that, but I want them to be crushed in you know, in some areas. So this is probably where I would do a selective edit um, on that. Add a little clarity and again, a little structure. The structure really, let me, let me um, zoom in on this. Now, these little, these little spots right here, these are, are, are pigments. So with the, uh, with the structure, that really sharpens those up. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that that tool there. Now this um, this program, I I haven't uh, I used it years ago and I dropped it because um, Lightroom was just working well enough for me back then and I was having some issues with tethered shooting, it was dropping. Um, but um, what was my point? Um, oh, it's supposed to have a superior or a very good color um, tools. And now we're in the color pattern, the color um, 
uh, tab. And I have not um, used this program since I, I, I started using it again about a couple months ago, but I haven't um, experimented much in the color uh, panel. So I can't, I can't wow you with any of that kind of uh, processing, but um, it does have lots of neat, neat tools um, that you can use. And uh, this, this, this portion here is where you want to uh, adjust specific colors. Um, and, but this, this here is very useful for, um, say you just want to adjust your colors in the shadows or the highlights, the, you know, say you have a color cast in the shadow, you can go in here and in this panel and deal with stuff like that. Um, but who, does anybody have a suggestion on what, uh, what they would uh, do with the color on this and what they'd like to see or, or anything? Yeah, it's hard to tell on that, whether it's oranges or reds that, you know, that, uh... Well, see this little, uh, you know, all of this, this is like Lightroom, it has a little sampler that mm -hmm. we can uh, pick, which we have now. We can zoom in and, you know, we can pick any color. You know, there's a lot of different shading here. So you can pick, we can pick something kind of in the middle. And now you see how this, well now, now this is our target area. And if you press, uh, let's zoom back out. If you press this little thing, say view selected area, everything that it's targeting has turned black and white. So if we want these other areas, what we need to do is we need to go in and manually drag our selection around. See, that's, that's making it less, it seems like. Um, but if we play with this thing, then we can affect the selection, okay? Um, and once, once you have that selected, then, then you can obviously adjust all of these, these things here, the smoothness, which is really, you can change the U obviously, um, and saturation, of course, I just saturated a little bit in the basic panel and you all obviously can ch uh, change the lightness as well. Um, this, this one also has a, a this is kind of cool, it has a skin, a special skin tone thing that uni, uniforms like blotchy skin and stuff, pretty cool. Anyway, all right, I think, uh, I think we ought to um, go on uh, to my slideshow presentation and, and uh, take a look at some things that I have shot in the past and fully processed. All right. All right, let's close that one. For your information, that color that you're just looking at, yeah. um, the new uh, Lightroom, the one that just downloaded yesterday, the, yeah. has an improved section there. So you can do the, you know, the highlights, midtones, and shadows. With I read colors. about that. When I uploaded, I read the little notes. And yes, thank you. Yeah, I can't wait to check that out. And I can't wait to check out what they did with the tethered shooting. Because uh, they they at least added live view, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I have to try try that. I tried the color; it was fun to play with. Oh, great! Good news. Good news. This is beautiful. So, okay, That's yeah. So nice. these are a few shots that I've taken, and um, this is a a, a zoanthid, a soft coral. These are these this this thing I'm circling in the center here. This is one polyp. There's the mouth. This is the petal disc, and these are the tentacles. So this is a colonizing cori, co a colonizing coral um, of lots of polyps. These polyps are approximately a quarter inch in size. Okay, fascinating. This coral, I wish I had some more of these in my tank. I've sold all these off. This oh, color wow. is not saturated at all. And the thing about it, when you get, this is a true macro shot. When you get this close to uh, these animals, you see color that you can't see five feet away or even, even a foot away with the naked eye. You say, wow, is that the same coral? But yeah, it's just incredible. Beautiful colors. Thank you. Yeah, wow. see this one, this one here is, is taking in, uh, taking in uh, water. 
actually the, the all the mouths are open on this coral these are the tentacles that are retracted this is only the tip of the tentacle that you can see right here if i threw some food in there all around this this area that i'm circling around this area too these tentacles would come out wow. and they would carry food into the mouth i like your composition too oh Thank you. Wow. Um, this is uh, this is just a close-up shot. This is a very large coral. This one's probably three inches in diameter, so you you can see how much you're you're seeing of that one. Wow. This is another zoanthid colony, same size as the first one I showed you. Just uh, these come in so many different uh, color wow. varieties. It's it's just incredible. This is oh. a uh, this is an anemone. Oh. It's called a, a bubble tip, commonly called a bubble tip anemone, uh, obviously because of these, these swollen bubble-like uh, things and, on the tentacles. And this, this uh, bubble probably is, um, oh geez, it's probably a half an inch. So this is just a close-up shot, wow. um, but it shows lots of detail. This, this, uh, I have one of these in my, my tank um, uh, that we were just shooting. Wow. You have just the one tank? I right now I do. My uh I had a whole aquaculture facility in my garage which we never used for cars. I had about 5000 gallons of water in there and I just did um uh, uh aquaculture corals. And mm -hmm. now that's a photo studio. So all I have now is my my one tank which is in my in my uh, stu you know, my my working, my photographic uh, office, and it's great because I just look over to the left and I, <laughs> I get to take a break and look at my corals. Now this is uh this is there are two corals. This beige and white one is a, a soft coral. And it's called pulsing zinnia. These these tentacles here open and close. It's like a dance watching it, and this is growing up through another. A different coral. These these uh, pulsing zinnia heads. Each each one of these is is probably uh, uh, oh I don't know three eighths of an inch. This is just a close up shot. And this is another <laughs> close up shot. Obviously, clownfish. This is the same uh, uh, bubble tip anemone as uh, you saw earlier. Just different color. There's Dory. Uh, yeah, um, this one actually, I think I put in a nature um, um, competition, and uh, I, I guess it it didn't it didn't do well um, because it's really just a photo. Although if I would have if I would have called attention to this area right here, uh, you see how these tentacles are starting to fold in. That means one of these tentacles here, probably this one. Uh, has caught something and it's it's starting to take it towards the the mouth on this particular polyp here, so maybe if I would have mentioned feeding, it would have been, <laughs> it would have been better. But it's one of my favorites. Um, I, I like the coral in the background, uh, the nice soft uh, bokeh. Um, you can uh, I didn't mention this, but you can you can get say like a, a fabric crate a ninety degree piece of out of two sheets of acrylic to form a 90 degree um, structure. And you can use an aquarium magnet to put that structure on the front of your tank on the inside. And if you make it out of white acrylic or, or put a right, white piece of acrylic on top of it, if it wasn't white, it would act as a reflector to fill in your shadows. And now you take your corals and individually put them on this platform and now you can get to them easier, you can light them easier, and you can even, even choose what type of background you want behind them. Um, so that's, that's, that's fun to do uh, set up shots like that. This is the same coral, only this is a true macro shot and you see how, how large that one polyp is. Wow. This is a close up of the rose anemone only looking down. Uh, so you get to see the petal disc, which is this area here where the base of the tentacles attach. And wow. I, I really like the opaque white areas of this coral. 
beautiful. This is a macro shot. I love, I really love shots like this because I can't capture the true fluorescence uh, even if I use the yellow filter, but I didn't use the yellow filter on this, but I used heavy blue light. I was able to maintain some of these greens in here and they actually do look kind of uh, fluorescing. Um, and I love seeing these, the all this, all this striation, all the detail of the, this is, this um, coral is called a small polyp stony coral. And this tissue is very thin. Uh, if you scraped it away, this shape would actually be a piece of calcium, like you see when you buy bleached corals in a gift shop. Um, so there's only a tiniest bit of of skin on that. And what you're seeing here is the, the if you could see the, the, the skeleton without the, the tissue on it, these lines would be evident as, as in the skeleton. So it's really exciting to get this close and see that, that much detail for me. These are stunning, Steve. I'm amazed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is just yeah. another one of what you saw, just a different variety. Uh, and this one's actually a little larger. So this is just a close up shot. Um, this this particular coral is a fungia coral. It's a it's in the shape of a disc, a flat disc like a sand dollar, only a little bit bigger. And the skeleton isn't smooth like a scan, sand dollar. It has veins in it and right through this area the light areas here with the, the the lines that's the actual that's that's the texture of the skeleton and again that's the only um, really thin tissue over that so you're actually able to see the structure of the skeleton through the tissue you know obviously these are the the tentacles the mouth is right there it's kind of hard to see because there's tentacles in front of it okay this is a shot of a zoanthid um, that I used uh, only blue light, uh, UV LED, the very dark uh, royal blue LED, um, and, and a little bit of the lighter blue LED. Um, and the coral fluoresces uh, while you're looking at it. It's, it's like looking at a dark room poster under a black light. So you can't capture that on film, but you can use a yellow filter and get this. It's not exactly what you see, but it does show certain uh, spectrums of fluorescence and it's, it's kind of cool, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Here's, here's another shot wow. with the same That's lighting, nice. the same technique, you know, this is a little closer shot. This is probably still a close up shot. My, maybe not a true macro shot, I, I can't remember. Fantastic, though. Beautiful. Hours on the sea. Here's another. This is a crop. Um, this is a pretty heavy crop because, I, like I said before, I love seeing this detail. And I wanted to get a nice depth of field. I didn't feel like focus stacking. I'm lazy. Um, so I sacrificed a lot of pixels to get this but I'm very pleased with it. I, I think I did some brush work maybe in here to, uh, you know, highlight a little bit of, of color, or a little, make a little um, areas a little more luminous. Um, I love the luminance. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, these are clams. These are tridactin clams. This is a, a group of them. Uh, you can see one, the large one here in the middle. Here's a Kind of a black and white one overlapping a bit. Here's another one underneath on the top left. You got one on the bottom right and a little piece of another one above it. These are really one of my favorites. I actually ordered some in to do to show, shoot for you, but uh, they weren't very healthy and uh, they aren't opening or expanding like the you see here. So we we didn't do that. Here's here's another shot. Same clams, just. A little different composition. Um, I like the first shot. I, I left the sand in here so you could see the color temperature. You see it's white sand and it, it looks pretty white. So um, these are what the, the clams look like under daylight. Under blue light, they, they, they looked very, very different. And I, I decided to push color around with this one and get and and get in real close. This this um, the colors don't look like this. I was just playing around with it. 
and uh, just another another close up. Um, not sure that that's not so great. <laughs> not sure why that got in there. Uh, here, this is a crusting coral. Uh, it's a Montipora. And if you look here at the top, you see this little triangle area. This is the reef. This is a calcareous rock that was probably produced by mm, cal, uh, stony corals at some point that died off and created the reef. Well, now this coral, I set it on this piece of rock and it's growing. This is the this is the growing edge right here of this portion of it. And there's a growing edge here. And further down, there's this is where it's already grown together. Um, wow. So this is this is a uh, this is a macro shot here. These polyps, um, maybe not, maybe close to macro. These polyps are really really tiny. Uh, this particular coral um, is an Acropora, and this one is uh, has just been feeding. You see all these tentacles are totally expanded. Even in the mouth, in the center here, there's tentacles that come out. Uh, actually, actually, each one of these, uh, so this is the central, this is the growing tip. It's called an axial coralite. And it has each one of these surrounding uh, are, 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 cor, cor, are radial coralites. So this, this, this coral, this stony coral is made up of just many, many, many uh, polyps. These are all individual, each one of these has the same structure. They all have a mouth, they all have tentacles and they all feed the overall coral. It's pretty amazing. This is a, uh, oh, when we shot the wrinkly coral, that was a chalice coral, it was commonly called a watermelon. This is the same coral, only just with a different color form. And again, these are, these are, these are the mouths. Wow. This is a chalice coral. This is a, I, I, I added this to show you that you can take these long exposure um, shots handheld. And the way you do that, this was taken at an aquarium store. You get your camera and you mash it right up against the glass and you mash your face right up against the camera or whatever you got to do to keep it from moving. Hit the shutter and just hold it steady. The camera is not going to move if you give it enough pressure. Um, and that's, that's what I did there. And then this is the same coral from uh, the opposite, uh, opposite panel. So it, you can do it if you're out in a museum or something and they'll allow you <laughs> to put your camera on the glass, then go for it. Uh, this, this coral is a large coral. This is just a close up shot. This whole thing that I'm circling here is one polyp. Uh, and this of course is the mouth again. And, and again, the, where you see the folds is where the tentacles come out and feed, uh, take food to the mouth. This is heavy blue light. I did not try to correct this. And um, I, I just liked, uh, at the time, I liked the, 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 blue, the blue look to it. Um, this is an Acropora. And uh, like that real fuzzy one, uh, it, each one of these has, is, a, is an own coral, coral uh, a, a polyp. And, but this coral isn't really active feed, actively feeding much now. This is a very close up. Uh, this is a macro shot of an encrusting coral that actually encrusts and rises up from the substrate a little bit. So this is another Acropora. Nice, nice detail on the skillets, you know, on the in here. Um, this is a large. Paul, this, is, uh, this is a small polyp stony coral, and this is a large polyp stony coral. Um, the, poly the mouth you can't see. It's buried down in all and amongst all these tentacles. And uh, from what I can tell, this whole image here is one polyp, where, where on this small polyp stony coral, this is one polyp. So huge difference. And this colony, these get, these get very big. I have several of these in the tank. 
Uh, this is the same coral, only a different species. These are, these are just the, uh, mostly just the tips showing here. This is a purple, purple polyps on, uh, on this coral. I really like how saturated they are. This is exactly how they look. Wow. This coral is, uh, this is very similar to the one National Geographic used for their screensaver, <laughs> only uh, that was a different color. But the, again, the, I really like these very, very close images. You just, you cannot even imagine this coral looking like this when you're just standing looking at an aquarium. Oh my gosh. And finally, uh, nice. this one, I, I don't, haven't done a whole lot of real creative uh, processing and I, I think I'm probably going to now, <laughs> um, looking at all this old work. Uh, this one, uh, there was lots of shadow detail in it, but I, I crushed all that out in, in, uh, to highlight the actual, you know, what's going on here. And uh, I don't like the composition so well, but I like the, I like the drama of it. Mm -hmm. Reaching out. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I think that's it. Let me, um, let me go back to my video so I can close, summarize, and I'll show you my overhead uh, setup while I still have it going. So I think I'm going to uh, uh, turn off Back to me, turn off the shooting cam. Okay, shooting cam is off. Stop screen sharing, which I've done. Close capture one or it'll get all wonky. Oh, that's already closed. Turn on video cam. But now I have to steal back the cable that we had bad. Um, turn my video cam on and start my video. And if we're lucky, we'll have video. <laughs> if we're lucky. That was the key, the key phrase. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, off on. Is the camera on? Hmm. Uh, hang on one one second, guys. Me. Um, uh, oh. Um, maybe my battery died. Jeez, I charged up all my batteries. Although I, ha to be honest, I haven't purchased batteries um, ever. <laughs> I'm still working with batteries from 2015. Yes, it was the battery. Look at that. Bad photographer. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, let me show you the uh, the setup real quick. You see how I have my uh, my boom set up on the tripod, and I've got my my custom made box, so so uh, uh, we can get nice high quality photos, wow. and. As long as you don't flood the box, it works very well. <laughs> All right, guys. Really amazing. Well, thank thank, yeah, really thank you good. for your nice. thank you I, for your patience, guys. And uh, I want to I want to thank uh, the the photo photographic society, particularly Tony for hosting the meeting, and uh, for Steve Munch for um, uh, technical and Zoom information, as well as Bill for z helping me with Zoom and other other aspects um, that I, I needed help with. Um, and um, I also would like the advancement to thank the advancement committee for voting me into the uh, the uh, master's cad candidate uh, category. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and if you're interested in seeing any of my work, uh, go to Steve Ruddy, R-U-D-D-Y, photography.com. I'm not sure if that's on the members roster or not. Um, but if you forget it, just Google my name. It'll come right up. And uh, I also have a Facebook page, business page, Steve Ruddy Photography again. 
as well as a Fine Art America page where I attempt to sell prints. Uh, it's a nice place to uh, check out, um, not only for my work. Um, and I also have Instagram and uh, probably a couple other things. My wife asked me today, are all these links on your website? And I just realized, geez, none of my links are on my website. So I will be adding those uh, if you can't remember all those and you, you want to check me out. So um, thank you for getting, oh, and, and to plug my, my photography business, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, the studio is under construction, probably about another month. Uh, we'll be able to start uh, setting it back up. And uh, if anybody's into film, hook, hook up with me. I got a, uh, gonna have a nice dark room. We'll have two enlargers so you can come on over and we can work together. Um, and uh, uh, if you need any printing, I have two printers. Uh, the new one will be a 24 inch roll fed, which will print up to 59 feet in case you need that much. <laughs> So uh, thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. And I, I hope uh, it went, um, you know, we had a few issues, but overall uh, we worked them out and I think it went pretty smooth. Hey, Steve, Thank, I, the coral. Thank you, Steve. That was fascinating. Steve, I just want to say you did a fantastic job. Oh, thank you very much. I really very, appreciate it. Very comprehensive, very technical. Uh, your work is amazing. Yeah. I, I've just got a bunch of questions for you that I'll follow up with you later. I won't keep the. Oh, no worries at all. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not seeing. Hang on. Let me put gallery. Who, who is who is talking? Greg. Uh, Greg. Greg Peck. Greg. The reason okay. my videos, my video oh. not showing up. Yeah, my videos. Oh, okay. too. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you yeah. all. For